high school, I had a friend that had a dad in the U.S. Army, and his dad came home from a six-month deployment. After he came home, um, they told him that he had to go back again to another deployment. His dad, after finding out, he committed suicide. Hello, um, my name is Dolph Rodriguez, and I will be discussing uh, the military suicides. Military suicides is high, and the government needs to step up the action so they can prevent the numbers or, or, or lower it down. My main point number one, I will be discussing the, the suicide numbers in the military branches. My main point number two, I will be discussing the, um, the causes of these suicides. And my main point number three, I will be discussing what the government should do in order to prevent the suicide from happening or lower the numbers down. So main point number one, um, <clears throat> based on my source by Ellie Clifton, he states that the, the suicide rate in the military is at its highest level in 10 years. He also states that this year alone, 154 soldiers committed suicide. That's in the Army, Navy, all the four branches. The statistics by the Department of Defense shows that in the U.S. Army, 80, 80 suicides were committed. 34 suicides were committed in the Air Force. 24 in the Navy and 18 in the Marine Corps. All this came from the source of the Department of Defense. After we, after we learned the number of suicides, what are the causes? Um, examples by Ellie Clifton, he says that soldiers with multiple combat tours, they develop stress, combat stress, post-trauma stress, or combat exposure. So after they come back from a long tour, they're all stressed and they really can't handle life anymore. Ali Clifton also mentioned that these soldiers come home with personal financial problems. Either they cannot, either they can't pay the bills, or or either they have marriage problems or a lot of family problems. Now we now that we know the causes, what the government should do to prevent to prevent these suicides. A testimony by, by Marguerite Morrison, she states that the government should provide more mental health services to these ill soldiers. If, if this is done, um, this will provide soldiers a lot, wait, um, this will encourage soldiers that there's another way to solve their problems. Ellie Clifton also mentioned that they need to separate the, the soldiers' firearms because six out of 10 military suicides I committed by firearms, and half of them I bought privately owned firearms. So they, if they remove those firearms, at least they will lower the numbers down. James Dow from the New York Times, he also mentioned he also mentioned that soldiers need long long periods of long periods of rest after deployment, because you know they if they come home from a six month deployment, seven month deployment, and they don't get they don't get enough rest. And then a week, a week later, they they come going back. That doubles that develops more stress, and that leads to suicides. If if my if my friend's dad would have had longer a longer period of rest, he would have been here right now. May he rest in peace. And the government should should really step up the action because these suicides are way on top. From the past, from the past decade, at least it increased by sixty percent. So that's really about seven soldiers that are dying each day, at least, at least. And that's it. Great, Dalfrey, thank you. Uh, could our next speaker get ready, and I'll speak with Dalfrey while you're getting ready. Uh, obviously. Uh, Let's, let's see if we can get the PowerPoint to work. No, we'll get it to work. All right, so next, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Who's our next speaker?
No. Um, this, so that's um, so, uh, humans of war. The social media group. No one social media. Then the arts group. Arts. Okay. Uh, Dalfrey, um I had I had a, I had like a higher score for you, and then the conclusion was not. It, I, I had a real sense that it hadn't been rehearsed. It was kind of off the cuff, yeah, and so um, where I would have given you one score, it, it kind of lowered at the end. The endings are really important. Um, you you need to leave the audience with a feeling, with a strong feeling of an ending. And endings are not easy, and you have to really give yourself uh, the time and the practice. It you have to practice that ending. Because ending with that's it doesn't work, um, and so there was a, there was a few points taken off because because of the ending. Other than that, I thought the I thought your your presentation was really well rehearsed. I mean, well organized. Um, I thought there was a variety of material in it that um, that really helped the argument to work. A lot of citations. I'm sorry the PowerPoint didn't work. Please send it to me um, if you can send it to me as, as soon as possible. Uh, because I'll, I'll then add, I'll add that into the notes here. Um, yeah, your, your, the speed at which you delivered was really good. I, I think you'll be pleased with your, with your uh, video. I think, it, I think it looked, it looked quite good, except for the ending. It just, it just, it, I could immediately tell this wasn't had been thought through. You kind of thought it through until that point, and that point you didn't quite know how you're gonna, how you're gonna finish it up. All right. Make sure, and then um, it was only, it wasn't quite five minutes, and I'd asked for something, but four and a half minutes, it was fine. Please make sure to leave me your cards. Just uh, so I know how much time we have, how many more presentations do we have? One, two, just two, stay the last day. Okay.